So today we're going to be going over how to install these Pro Sport gauges in my 2015 Mustang GT. I've got an air fuel gauge and you can kind of see it in there. Boost gauge. They're both digital and they're both going to be going in this pillar here. I did already pull out my stock pillar so unfortunately I can't show you guys how to do that part and I went ahead and put my speaker in here. The speaker doesn't clip in like it does on the stock pillar. It just goes in here and then there's that little screw on the back of this aftermarket pillar. You loosen that, push down on that silver metal tab there, and that holds it in once you tighten that up. It seems like they could have done a little better, but that's what it came with. Uh, these gauges, I did not buy them. They came with the car when I got it. So feel free to roast me for buying cheap gauges. I know they're probably not the greatest and I'm not sure what brand this pillar is. The guy seemed like he bought a lot of stuff from American Muscle, so I'm guessing that's probably where it came from. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what I don't like about this kit. Um, it doesn't come with very much wiring at all. You get these two pigtails that go into the back of your gauges, and that's literally it. It is not nearly enough for what this job is gonna require. The sending unit also only has a very small pigtail, so Definitely going to need some more wire. I went ahead and went to my auto parts store, picked up some rolls of uh, 18 gauge wire. I picked up a mini fuse too, not sure if I'm going to use that or if I'm going to just try to tap into some uh, existing ign ignition power on the car. And then I also picked up this little uh, fuel line fitting that's going to go on the manifold of my supercharger for getting my reading. The main issue I was having when I went to do this project was there just isn't a whole lot of information on YouTube or the internet either for that matter uh, regarding putting these on a car with a supercharger like a Roush setup like I have. There are some for a centrifugal supercharger type setup like such as a Pro Charger and then there's some for uh, turbos but I couldn't find much for the setup that I have. So I figured I would go ahead and try to make a how-to video just to try to help out the entire community. Uh, this should apply for pretty much any vehicle that is running a Roush supercharger because the ports should probably be the same. I'm not gonna guarantee that, but from what I was reading, even some of the guys running Roush superchargers on their Raptors, it was the same ports where you're going to be pulling your boost reading out of. So yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So like I said earlier, I did already pull out my uh, factory A-pillar cover. Uh, it's really easy to pull out. There's nothing nothing too major about it. it. Basically just is set up in here and it's held in by a couple tabs. As you can see, there's a couple clips there in the back. They all just pop out. The only other thing you do have to worry about is this uh, little clip here. That will unplug out of your factory little speaker that goes up in here. And that speaker is also pretty easy to pull out. You can see there's these three tabs here. Those just all push back to the sides and then that speaker just pops right out. And the little grill cover also, it just, uh, you can pry it out with a little flathead screwdriver and it pops right out as well. So once your old day pillar is out, you can go ahead and start getting your new one set up. You can uh, just throw these in the pods without these sun shields or you can put them in behind like so and then put them in there. That's probably what I'm going to go ahead and do. I think it's just going to look a little bit cleaner. Uh, like I said, the speaker just goes right in there. Basically just sets right in there. That little screw in the back loosens. You push down on the metal there, tighten it back up, hold it in there pretty good. And that's just how it's going to ride. And then that little grill just pops right in just like factory. As you can see, I've got the gauges in my pod. Something I would recommend doing is uh, when you're going to put these in, kind of hold it up in the car where it's going to be, and then make sure your gauges are twisted to where you're going to want them to be so they're straight when you're looking at it in the car. That'll help you out a lot because these do fit in really tight and it's not gonna be easy to start twisting them into position once you've already got them fully seated into the pillar. So here on the passenger side of my manifold, you can see down there, I already uh, pulled my plug out, but there's a port there where you can tap into and further back, right back underneath there, 
there's also another one. So you get two places where you can tap into for boost. I did already pull my plug, like I said. It's just this little type of cap screw deal. Uh, it's a 3 16 Allen head, and you can reach it super easy with a 3 8 ratchet and then a uh, about a 6 inch extension. Reach right down in there and pull that thing out. So the next thing you're going to want to do is remove your driver's side uh, wheel and tire. Then you're going to come in here onto the splash shield, and you're going to remove, I don't know, I think it's like half a dozen or so of these little plastic clips. And that's going to let you pull your splash shield back. And then behind here, up in there, you're going to see that grommet. I've already kind of pulled it out of the way. Uh, you can see my screwdriver sticking through there. That is where we're going to come in with our wiring for these gauges. Coming over here into the car. That is going to be right up in here. Sorry about the camera. But just directly above this uh, footrest here, you can see where my screwdriver stuffed through. Uh, that'll allow us to pull those wires up here. And then I'm going to route them up through here. Come up here, up to my gauge pillar. This plastic piece here, it also just pops right off. Just got a few little clips that uh, hold it in there. You want to be careful with it, obviously. You don't want to break anything, but it, it comes off pretty easily. So for the wiring, you got your sending unit, obviously. Uh, it's got a red, white, and black wire. So the white wire, according to their schematics, is the sending wire that's going to go to the back of your gauge, which is a green wire. doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's how they have it. Uh, the ground wire, I'm choosing to go ahead and run that into the cab as well, so I can put all the grounds together so it's nice and clean. The red wire is going to be the accessory power for this wire, or for this sending unit, rather. Uh, that's all going up into the cab. This yellow wire is also going up into the cab. That is going to be the constant Power, which I'm going to run over to my battery. You can run it to any hot wire that's always 12 volt. Um, that's just how I'm choosing to do it. And I'm sending that all down through here. You can kind of see down there, there's a hole that goes down into the fender well behind the splash guard. Comes in up there. And then uh, Ford, in all their wisdom, this grommet here had a little nipple on it that you could just cut off the end of and then it just slides right back in through that grommet. Goes into the footwell and all just comes right out through here. Then you can proceed to run it right up the side here, right through here, and then there would be your gauge pillar and it'll all just connect nice and clean. So for your power, you're going to want to tap into this, uh, let's see, it is a brown and yellow wire. That goes up to the back of your mirror up there, and that is uh, powered when your ignition is on. So you're basically going to want to tap into that. There's a way better ways of doing this, I'm sure, but I put all my power wires, tapped them into that, into this, uh, it's not really a wire nut, but it's like a crimp type wire nut and I uh, crimped it all in there. So that'll give it power. Like I said, I'm sure there's way better ways of doing it. That's just the way I did. So that'll give you guys a relatively easy way to get power to your gauges if you don't want to run a wire or clear to your fuse box or something like that. Once you've made all your connections, I would highly recommend grabbing a bucket of zip ties. I got these from Napa, I think it was. They're pretty cheap, definitely worth grabbing. And it sure beats electrical tape, in my opinion. You can just go and every few inches or so, just kind of tidy everything up. Makes it a nice tight, I mean, it's obviously not factory, but it makes it look like an actual wiring harness and not just a bunch of scrambled wires hanging off all over the place. One other thing you're going to want to do before you put this pillar back up in here is there is this leash that goes up to your A pillar. You're going to want to run that back in here, and that basically... See, it just kind of clips into that there. But that basically is just going to hold this in the event that your airbag deploys. It'll keep it from getting thrown off at you. I'm sure it's not a huge deal, but, I mean, it's there, so you might as well put it back on. Something else that you may or may not need is that little C-clip nut up here. The factory A-pillar has a just a hole there. It's not where you're going to be able to thread a screw into it at all. 
but there is a decent slot so you can uh, grab these from Home Depot. I think it was like a dollar for two of them. And uh, you can just clip that on there and then run your screw up through the hole there, screw it into there and you'll be good to go. You may not need those depending on what your kit comes with. Like I said, my A-pillar was something that came with the car. So I don't know if it ever initially came one with one and got lost or what happened to it, or maybe it just never came with one. But anyway, that's something to think about. And if uh, you're wondering what to do, Home Depot has them for cheap. Once you've got all that done, go ahead and put your A-pillar back up there. Make sure you tuck it in behind the weather stripping. Make sure it's all pushed back in there how it should be. And then you're just gonna grab a screw this is probably, oops, probably like, uh, I don't know, slightly, maybe an over an inch Phillips head screw. You can grab a black one too, or paint it too, to make it blend in a little bit. This is just what I got, really don't care. And then you're just gonna run it up in your hole, screw it in tight, and that part's done. Next up, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put in your barb fitting. I ended up going with a barb fitting over that fuel line fitting I had, just because the fuel line fitting really didn't grab the hose nearly as well as I wanted it to. So I went ahead and picked up a little barb fitting. Uh, you're gonna wanna put some thread tape on that thing, tighten it up in there, and then put your hose over it. I didn't put a clamp in so far, I haven't had any issues. That barb fitting holds it real tight. I did put a hose clamp over the little filter here. That's to just kind of filter the air coming out going into your uh, transmitter or whatever you want to call that keep it from getting dirty inside and uh yeah then you're just going to have that going there you already got your wires running to the cabin and that part's good to go now the only thing you guys are going to have left to do is that yellow wire in there that's your constant power you're just going to run that over to your battery or also it could be your fuse block i just ran a wire ring terminal, put it right on there, and we're good to go. That is the main power supply for your gauges. The wire from the back of the mirror that I talked about, that is what is basically going to switch them on and get them to start taking, it's basically just your switch. So your main power feed is gonna be coming from uh, your battery right there. Now we're sitting in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the start button and bring up the power to the gauges. everything is working great so one other thing i did want to mention guys uh, that air fuel ratio gauge that came when i bought the car it will not work for the coyote platform i believe it's for narrowband o2 sensors and the coyote uses wide bands so i'm gonna probably end up replacing that with like an oil pressure gauge maybe a fuel pressure gauge either one of those is going to be way more valuable to me anyway than a air fuel ratio gauge because I've already got one and the LED screen that's in between my two main gauges on the dash. So if you guys want to do that also, obviously it's just going to be kind of proprietary to whatever gauge you do install. If you do fuel fuel pressure gauge, it's going to tap into your fuel rail obviously for pressure. So you guys kind of get the picture, but the main purpose of this video was just to show you guys how to install the gauges and mainly how to route the wires because I couldn't find hardly anything on that in any other video I saw. That's going to about wrap up this video guys. If you got any questions on the whole process or anything didn't make sense or if you think we could have done something better, drop a comment down below. Otherwise, we'll catch you in the next one.